Good evening, folks. Thank you all for getting on the stream. I appreciate you for taking the time out of your busy evening to get on to another stream of Let's Talk About It Now. Shout out to all my new subscribers on YouTube. I appreciate your support. Also, as you come into the building, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button so we can keep this content getting out to those that are interested in hearing about good content as it relates to uh, current events and current news, things that actually mean something. So shout out to you. Uh, good evening to Gail. Thank you for getting on the stream this evening. Shout out to Dwayne Bowen. Shout out to you, man. I appreciate your support. Shout out to Abdul. Shout out to Gail. I mean, shout out to, uh, yeah, shout out to Gail as well. <laughs> I said it twice to you, Gail. Thank you for coming on the stream tonight. Shout out to Margaret Burns. Thank you for your support. Love you. And shout out to uh, Lynn. I appreciate you and your passionate comments on last night's live stream. Very engaging, very thought-provoking comments that you made. Appreciate you. Shout out to Quan. I appreciate you and your uh, thought-provoking comments as well. And thank you for getting on the stream tonight, my brother. I appreciate you. I want to go into some updates tonight based on the stream that we had last night. And shout out to all of my moderators. If you can hear me clearly, if the music is at a suitable level, put a one in the chat room. And we'll be getting started. If I need to turn it down a little or adjust it, put a number two in the chat room. I appreciate you. Awesome. Thank you, Quan. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, Gail. All right, let's get right into it. Let's get right into it. Huh, we got some updates tonight, folks. <laughs> we got some updates, man. I tell you, uh, the buffoonery again and the BS is at an all-time high, as you heard me mention last night. Uh, they just won't stop with the stupidity, you know? Um, the least that you could do as a law enforcement body of individuals who are supposed to be looked at as professionals is to be transparent. I mean, in light of the magnitude of what's going on at your police department, uh, Memphis Police Department, you would think that you'd be a lot more transparent than you are. Uh, but I see you're not. The foolishness is still going on. And I know what you're going to say. You're going to say, well, you know, this is an ongoing investigation. And like I said in last night's stream, it's always an ongoing investigation, even though the video shows clearly what was being done, you know. I'm coming to believe that they think the public is just blind and stupid. Um, but we already know that that's not the case. We do know what our eyes see, <laughs> you know, and uh, the video does not lie. Well, tonight we're going to talk about the sixth officer. And uh, believe it or not, folks, there's a seventh officer that they will not call by name. <laughs> They only refer to this seventh officer as the other officer, as if the other officer has no name. So it makes you wonder, who exactly are you protecting and why was you so easily motivated to convict these five black men and throw these five black men with charges, hit these five black men with charges with bails set between $200,000 to $300,000 uh, per individual. And from what I understand, all of them have bailed out. Uh, that don't mean they're going to stay out, but from what I understand, allegedly, they have bailed out. Well, at least we know they saved a little bit of money. Or they were thoughtless as they were with uh, Tyree Nichols. And they didn't care about taxing their family members with their foolishness. So we're going to get into this sixth officer that's been suspended. <laughs> not charged. Oh, not charged with anything, but simply suspended in his um, participation in the death of uh, Tyree Nichols. So we're going to talk about this individual. I'm sharing my screen. We're going to talk about this guy. This is from the Los Angeles Times. It says the sixth Memphis police officer suspended in connection with Tyree Nichols beating. It reads like this. 
This was dated January the 30th, 2023, updated at 5.05 p.m. Um, Memphis time or Los Angeles time by a writer named uh, Libor Janey, staff writer. It says, in the latest fallout from the police beating death of Tyree Nichols, Memphis officials on Monday announced three fire department personnel have been fired and confirmed a police officer who used his taser on Nichols has been suspended since shortly after the deadly incident. The moves come came as a local prosecutor said they had not ruled out criminal charges against the suspended officer, Preston Hempfill, which is this officer's name, or others involved in the incident. So far, five officers have been charged with murder and other crimes stemming from the beating on January the 7th. Nichols died in a hospital a few days later from injuries he suffered when officers kicked and punched him while he was being restrained. We are looking at all individuals involved in the events leading up to, during, and after the beating of Tyree Nichols, the Shelby County District Attorney's Office said in a statement. While we are committed to transparency, uh, I don't think you're being committed to transparency, we cannot comment on the details of an ongoing investigation or give previews of what charges we may or may not bring. Well, see here, that that's the funny thing. We understand that in an ongoing investigation, there's not m much you can say. But if a camera indicates individuals that were involved, and if you've seen these cam these camera, uh, this camera footage, you can see clearly that there were at least eight to 10 officers present. You, don't, you can also see that there were fire department personnel also who arrived on the scene and yet rendered no emergency aid. I'll tell you folks, I think everybody who showed up and did nothing, you were complicit in the death of Mr. Tyree Nichols. I believe, and this is my personal opinion, I believe Mr. Tyree Nichols was already deceased on the scene this is what i believe i believe he was deceased on the scene and they transported a deceased man to a hospital and then connected him to life support equipment only to make it look and to cover up what they had already done this is what i simply believe and if you hear the interview from his mother his mother said when she walked into the hospital room and looked at her son hooked up to all of these machines, a breathing machine, and he, she said his head was swollen the size of a watermelon. She said his neck was beginning to split because it was so swollen, and she also indicated that his neck was broken. Oh man, I tell you something. All of the facts will be revealed. All of the facts will be revealed. She said her son's neck was broken. And she also indicated that had he even survived, he would have more than likely been a vegetable. Oh, so much information is still, again, ongoing. We want to just be sure and we want to be insured as a community that not only is the investigation ongoing, but that the justice is ongoing. Oh, yeah, because this is not something we should continue to be quiet about, because I'll tell you something. It happens way too much, way too much. And like I've said in other streams, an injustice for one is an injustice for all. We have to, be get, we have to begin to get that kind of mindset. Oh no, it can't just be a selfish mindset that we're only concerned when it's something that happens to us personally. Oh, we can't, we gotta get out of this mindset. See, the mindset where we believe and, be and think as one body of people oh that's when that's when the powers that be that don't want to see good things happen and good things transpire and that don't have a, the best interest of our community at heart that's when they start to tremble oh yeah that's when they get upset that's when they get real nervous and you know fidgety when they find us thinking as one body of people but again justice injustice for one is an injustice for all so they go on to say with hypocrisy while 
We are committed to transparency. We cannot comment on the details of an ongoing investigation or give previews of what charges we may or may not bring. Erica Williams, a spokeswoman for the office said that there was no timeline for when decisions would be made about filing for the charges. We are working with the TBI who's investigating this. So we have to get information from them, Williams said, referring to the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. Hemphill, this is the white officer that they failed to talk about or even failed to mention, who joined the force in 2018, was placed on administrative leave shortly after the police department began its investigation into the January 7th arrest of Nichols, who's 29, in a neighborhood on the southeast side of Memphis. Memphis police officials have not said what role Hemphill played in the incident, but attorney Lee Gerald, who said in a statement that he represents Hemphill, claimed he was the third officer to arrive at the initial stop of Mr. Nichols. Gerald said one of the four video city's officials released of the incident was recorded by the camera worn by Officer Hemphill. In it, Hemphill and others are seen angrily ordering Nichols from his car at a traffic light and screaming at him to get on the ground while Nichols asks what he has done wrong. In the video, officers forcibly try to restrain Nichols and Hemphill fires his taser. Now see, let's stop right there. What did they just say in the previous paragraph? They just said in the previous paragraph that Memphis police officials have not said what role Hemphill played in the incident. Oh, see, they think we can't see and they also think we can't read. Huh, let's continue. So we know what role he played. He fired his taser. Thank you for playing the public stupid. As Nickel gets to his feet and flees, this is when Hemphill fired his taser. The beating which was captured on other videos occurred when other officers caught up to Nichols several minutes later. As per departmental regulations, Officer Hemphill activated his body cam, Gerald said in the statement. He was never present at the second scene. He is cooperating with officials in this investigation. Officials have not detailed what led police to stop Nichols in the first place. Fire officials announced the termination of emergency medical technician Robert Long and Jermichael Sandridge and Lieutenant Michelle Whitaker in a statement posted on the department's Twitter account. The statement said that the trio were dispatched to the call about 8.32 p.m. and after responding to the original site of the traffic stop, they were directed to a nearby street where they found Nichols handcuffed and leaning against a police vehicle. An internal investigation concluded that Long and Sangridge were told they were responding to a call involving a person who had been pepper sprayed. But when they arrived, they failed to conduct an adequate patient assessment of Mr. Nichols. Now let's stop there. I'll tell you, this, what, this is what leans me to believe in my personal opinion, that Mr. Nichols had already been deceased by the time the medical officials had arrived which is why they didn't rush to give him medical aid. They didn't even rush to give him medical aid, which is what lends me to believe that Mr. Tyree Nichols had already passed away. They had already beaten this man to death. This is my opinion, but this is what I believe was the case. In a video released by the city that was recorded by a pole mounted camera, medical personnel can be seen arriving after the beating and for several minutes not tending to Nichols, who was visibly injured or huh, visibly deceased. An ambulance was eventually summoned to the scene. An ambulance was eventually summoned to the scene. You hear this, folks? Do you hear this? An ambulance was eventually summoned to the scene. So what were you doing while you eventually summoned the ambulance to the scene. What were you doing? Trying to get your story together, right? Trying to make sure all of you guys are on the same page, right? Well, I'll tell you something. We already know how the story goes. Again, this is the same kind of issue 
just different players. Same movie, same movie, different actors, different actors. The department probe found that the EMTs and lieutenant violated numerous department policies and procedures. The statement said their actions or inactions on the scene that night do not meet the expectations of the Memphis Fire Department and are not reflective of the outstanding service the men and women of the Memphis Fire Department provide daily in our community. Huh. Yeah, okay. Nichols died at an area hospital three days after traffic stop that spiraled into the gruesome assault in which officers kicked, punched, pepper sprayed the 29-year-old Nichols while he was being restrained by other officers. The killing has reignited debate over tactics used by specialized crime suppression units. The officers who pulled Nichols over for an unspecified traffic violation were members of one such team nicknamed the Scorpion Unit, which has since been disbanded. Searle and C.J. Davis, the police chief, initially told reporters that she wanted to keep the unit intact and would not scuttle it because a few officers had committed some egregious act. Huh, now look at that. She didn't want to disband the unit that caused the death of a 29 year old. You're talking about a specialized unit in Memphis comprising of about eight to 10 officers. All right, we're looking at half of the unit right there that was already involved in this egregious act. And yet the police chief said she didn't want to disband it. What forced her to disband it? I'll tell you. It was the family of Mr. Nichols who pressured the Memphis Police Department to disband the Scorpion unit. Oh, it's amazing. Amazing. It goes on to say, goes on to say, but she reversed her decision Saturday. After meeting with members of the unit and listening intently to the family of Tyree Nichols, community leaders and officers who have done quality work in their assignments, according to department news release. A source familiar with the case said that Hempfield was also a member of the Scorpion unit since last October. Now folks, make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. When you get these gang members with badges, when you get these gang bangers with badges who have the authority to go about abusing the public at will without impunity, you're looking at a police department that, know, that already knows these individuals exist. It's funny how when something happens like this, how blind the police department seems to be. They seem so shocked. Oh my God, I can't believe this happened. Oh, this is terrible. This is totally against our police policies and our police procedures and by no means will we stand by and allow something like this to happen. And yet, these things have happened all the time. They happen every day. And I'm sure they've happened many times in Memphis. It's amazing. Only a few of the cases like this escape through the cracks. Only a few. Only a few escape through the cracks. And then we find out about it. But I'll tell you something. I don't believe a law enforcement officer could inflict this kind of uh, harm to another individual. If it was his first time if this was their first time doing this. This is what they've been doing. It's just been gone unreported. And now finally their actions have caught up with them and bit them directly in the ass. That's what you're looking at now. It's not that they haven't done it before. And the departments that play stupid like they didn't know they, they had these kind of officers in their staff. <laughs> it's just hilarious to me. It's almost insulting to the intelligence of the public. As if we don't understand that an officer that's been in uh, on duty for five or ten years or more. And all of a sudden they're caught up in some 
egregious act where the public is concerned and then perhaps unfortunately someone dies that the law enforcement uh, uh, institution that they come from did not know that they had this kind of officer I mean what who do they think the public is they really believe the public is really that stupid that ignorant that they really don't understand that these people know who they hire they know who they have working for them and they know the attitudes of each one in fact they lean on the attitudes of those that are very aggressive they lean on the attitudes of those that are quick tempered and high strung and a little low level of respect where the public is concerned they lean on those kind of officers they use them like a good tool when they need something done and when things go left they have mechanisms in place to protect those officers so that the information never makes it to the media it never makes it to the general public oh we know what's going on these individuals who did this to Tyree Nichols this is not their first time oh this is not their first rodeo no doubt I don't believe they just did this that night <laughs> and I'm, I'm pretty sure you don't either we know how it goes down absolutely it says a source familiar with the case said that Hemphill was also a member of the Scorpion Scorpion unit since last October after a review of the video footage of the beating five of the involved officers were fired and charged with murder for Nichols death in the week since the incident local activists have pushed for police Davis to terminate any officers who were present as well huh now now, now we're talking oh now we're talking that now we're talking now we're talking let's see if that happens folks a spokesperson for the police department said Hemphill's suspension was not announced sooner because go ahead and go ahead come on they're going to give up their uh, excuse now this is what they're going to get so let's, well, let's wait for it a spokesperson for the police department said Hemphill's suspension was not announced sooner because the officer had not been fired and the department typically releases information about officers who are relieved of duty after an investigation ends. Oh, really? Oh, really? So a public citizen who dies at the hands of your law enforcement officers, regardless of whether <laughs> he was charged with anything or not, was he present and why wasn't the public made aware of his presence why wasn't the public made aware of his presence why were you so quick to make public the arrest and the suspension or, or termination I should say of the five black officers on your force why were you so quick to do that why are there other officers who are being insulated from being revealed who were present why what's going on Memphis what's going on Memphis the move was the latest fallout from the case Shelby County Sheriff Floyd Bonner jr. said in a tweet that that he had suspended two deputies pending the outcome of an internal investigation into their actions following the physical confrontation between police and Tyree Nichols see they're still talking about pending an investigation into their actions but yet they said earlier in the article that they knew what his actions were they knew what mr hempfield preston hempfield's actions were he was one of the officers who tased tyree nichols i told you they think we're stupid folks i told you they think we're stupid let's get into let's look at this uh dunkin donuts you know pastry eating looking joker right here this is Mr. Preston Hemphill. You, you know he's not chasing nobody. You know he's not chasing nobody. It said a white Memphis cop involved, and this comes from a, a, a news article called Crime and Justice by a breaking news reporter, Josh Fialo, updated January the 30th, 2023 at 7.29 p.m. It goes on to read like this. A white Memphis cop involved in the fatal arrest of Tyree Nichols, who was allegedly caught on body cam, saying he hoped the officers would stomp his ass. Ha <laughs> ha. Now, this is the one that was talking, that said that. This is the one that made the statement <laughs> that he wished when they caught him, they would stomp his ass. 
Yeah, Mr. Mr. Preston, Mr. Preston Hemphill, the donut guy, you know, who they claim they're still trying to find out his involvement, <laughs> yet still saying that he's the one that tased Mr. Tyree Nichols. Memphis police told the Associated Press that Preston Hemphill, 26, was relieved of duty shortly after January the 7th. Ain't that funny, but yet we're, not, we're just now hearing of his name. And he was relieved January the 7th. Again, not fired, but suspended. I wonder if he was suspended with pay. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder. Yeah, inquiring minds want to know. It says, he was relieved of duty shortly after January the 7th, traffic stop. But his name wasn't made public until Monday. He is the sixth Memphis officer to be punished for the traffic stop that led to a brutal beating and eventual death of Nichols. The department also revealed Monday that it has relieved a seventh. Now, here we go. Now, you remember in, in the beginning of the stream, I mentioned that there was a seventh officer, but they won't tell you who he, who he is. That's, I find that really funny and ironic. The department also revealed Monday that it had relieved a seventh unnamed officer from duty immediately following the incident they act like the officers underage you know when you got a minor you can't reveal his name and you can't reveal their face they act like the officer is underage huh, look at that unnamed officer from duty so why are you naming why are you uh, why are, why are you naming Preston Hempfield uh Memphis Police Department why are you okay with naming him if there's others who you relieved as well why can't the public know why can't her his family know oh i don't think you're being transparent at all i think you're trying to protect some while throwing others unlike the five black officers who were fired shortly after the incident hemphill and the unnamed officers are not facing murder charges and i wonder why three emts robert long again jermichael sangridge and lieutenant michelle whitaker were also fired Monday for their actions or inactions. When called to render aid to Nicole, to Nichols, Memphis Fire and Rescue announced. Now, I've always thought, I've always thought that a medical professional who fails to render aid and that individual dies, I've, al I've always heard that that was a crime. Not only could you lose your license, to uh, practice medically or your license to be in this case an EMT emergency medical technician but I, I also thought that was a criminal offense to deny medical aid and then an individual loses their life as a result sounds criminal to me sounds criminal to me a lot of people are going to be protected while a few bite the dust yeah, we'll find out as this continues on going into the future. Hemphill featured in the photo on the police department's Facebook page last July when he completed 40 hours of mental illness training to don't join the forces crisis intervention team. You know, he should have been able to diagnose the other five or six, however many is going to come out later, who had mental illness, including his own big donut eating self. All of them had mental illness. He had to, he got a degree. That was him accepting some type of certificate after completing 40 hours of mental illness training to, to join the forces crisis intervention team. And yet, Mr. Fat Boy didn't didn't intervene at all in the crisis that was before him. Instead, he felt it necessary to participate by tasing Mr. Nichols. Oh yeah, we see that the Pillsbury Doughboy right here was involved, Mr. Preston. Hempfield. We're gonna we're gonna waste too much time on him. We're gonna touch on these three officers, just so you kind of get a look at what these individuals look like. Let's see. Matter of fact, let's go here with aiding and abetting. We know about aiding and abetting. That's a crime, right? For those that may have simply uh, used their taser, like Mr. Hempfield did. Aiding and abetting a crime, the inchoate crime of aiding and abetting applies to an individual who assists in a crime but does not commit the crime himself. This person is also known as an accessory to the crime. Aiding and abetting varies greatly by state 
with some states varying the severity of the charge depending on the level of involvement of the accessory. Accessory and principle, listen to this. Aiding and abetting requires the, the existence of both a principal, now we know who the principal was, that was the five individuals that was physically beating Mr. Tyree Nichols. And an accessory, that would be the Pillsbury Doughboy, Mr. Preston Hemp Hemsley. He's the accessory. The principal is the person who is primarily responsible for the crime and who likely ultimately committed the crime. If two or more individuals are responsible for a crime, they can be charged as joint principals. The accessory is the person who assists with the crime, but is not directly involved with its actual commission. Typically, the test for distinguishing between the two is whether the person directly contributed to the crime, meaning the principal, or merely provided background help or assistance and accessory. Elements of aiding and abetting. A charge of aiding and abetting has three requirements. First, someone else must have committed a crime. Second, the defendant must have assisted that person in the commission of the crime. Third, the defendant must have had knowledge of that person's criminal intent or criminal plans. An individual will not be found guilty for accidentally assisting in a crime. For instance, if a man knows that his friend has committed a crime and are trying to escape he causes an incident in order to allow them to get away from the police. This could be aiding and abetting. However, listen to this. However, if the same man is involved in an incident that allows burglars to get away from the police, but he has no knowledge of the burglary or the effect, his incident would have, he cannot be charged with aiding and abetting. Now here's where uh, Mr. Pillsbury Doughboy, Officer Hemsley, Preston, an accessory to a crime, can have knowledge of criminal intent before or after the commission of a crime. An individual who is aware of the crime before it occurs and gives assistance in preparation to commit the crime is called an accessory before the fact. Now here, I believe, is where Mr. Pillsbury Doughboy comes in at. If an individual only learns of the crime after it has taken place, but provides assistance in the aftermath of the crime, he is known as an accessory after the fact. So you see folks, he's still, in, he's, still uh, uh, he's still guilty of involvement in the death of Tyree Nichols. I don't care how they try to couch it, how they try to twist it, how they try to turn it, they can do whatever they wanna do. You know, one thing for sure, he was there. He did do his part. However small, however large, doesn't even matter. He didn't try to stop it. And I think everybody who stood around watching it, knowing what they took their oath to do, again, which is to protect and serve, all of them were negligent of the same oath that they took, including those that worked in the criminal or uh, the medical field of emt they all have to take that hippocratic oath i would say hypocritical oath but you know what i mean they violated their oath as well as medical professionals and the police you know they violated their oath in terms of protecting and serving all they're trying to do again like i said last night's stream they are trying to protect their own ass that's what they're trying to do and they're trying to serve their own interests they're not trying to get justice at all. If it were up to them, they would have swept this issue under the rug. They would have swept this under the rug. They went to work trying to get their alibi and stories together so that all of them would be on one accord in telling the story. They prohibited, prohibited his mother from going to the hospital after they came to her house and let her know that her son was in the hospital and that he had resisted and that he was found uh, drinking and driving a DUI. This is the lie that they told his mother. They told his mother that he was in the hospital and that he had been stopped for a DUI and that as a result, he had been pepper sprayed and sent to the hospital. Then when she asked the officer what hospital, he said nearby, but never gave her a location. 
Then when she said, can I go see him in the hospital? They had the nerve, the audacity to tell her no. So she didn't even find out where her son was until the hospital called her directly. And this was about 4 a.m. in the morning. Mind you, the police officer came to her home just shortly after 8.30, 9 o'clock that night. So I imagine she didn't get any sleep. I imagine her father didn't get any sleep. These people didn't give a damn about what they had just done to her son. They were looking at trying to cover their own ass. And this is what this was all about. These wheels were spinning. They were spinning to cover themselves. And when the hospital called his mother about 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. that morning and told her, why aren't you, asked her, why aren't you here? She said, the police officers informed me that I could not come because he was under arrest. He was being detained. He was, he was being medically seen by a medical facility and that afterwards he would be booked. This is what they told his mother, folks. This is what they told his mother to her face. So all these hours had gone by and her son was laying up in a hospital, probably already deceased and breathing off of a breathing machine. Tubes all up his nose. Head swollen the size as she described as a watermelon. This is horrible, man. This is horrible. This is absolutely disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. And I'll tell you something. Huh. If aiding and abetting is a charge, I know it's a charge everywhere else. It's a charge in every single state of the union. And if it's a charge for us as private citizens, then damn it, it's a charge for law enforcement and any other public official who is whose salary is paid by the general public, by the same people that you say are liable for a charge like aiding and abetting, even if it's so, even if it's small as using a taser or throwing a rock and hitting somebody in the head. If throwing the rock and hitting the individual in the head was was culpable for the death of that individual, and guess what? He's an accessory, she's an accessory in that particular crime. And if the private citizen can be uh, made guilty of aiding and abetting, then so can a public official whose entire salary is paid by the public. They can be guilty of the same charge. No man is above the law, regardless of whether you're a law enforcement officer or a judge or whatever the hell position you have. If you're a civil servant, your salary is paid by the public that you consider nobody at all, that you consider someone you can lie to, that you can fool, that you can run circles around, that you can keep the truth from, that you can treat any way you feel like treating. These are the same people that secure your salary. These are the same people that ensure that your kids go to college when you send them. These are the same people, the same ones that help you put your children through private school when they can't even put their children through private school. Same ones, again, that help you put your children through college and they can't afford to send their children to college. Oh, you owe the public a whole lot more than what you're giving the public. Public servants, police officers, Law enforcement officers, you owe the public a whole lot more. And I'll tell you something, the public is tired of it, man. Public is tired of it, and the public is tired of you calling yourself public servants who are here to serve and protect, knowing you're not here to serve and protect anyone. This me against them mentality that most law enforcement uh, institutions have, this me against them mentality. Oh, this me against them mentality has to go. You can't sit along the side of the road looking for a speeding car as if these are a bunch of bugs coming by that you can just splat on in the middle of the street whenever you feel like it. No, you're going to end up serving and you are going to end up learning how to protect the public individuals that you are given an oath to protect and that you are paid by the 
public's taxpaying dollars by getting better training. Not better excuses, better training. Many of y'all need to take y'all ass to mental illness school. Y'all need to get some mental illness treatment. All of, most of y'all. And there's some really good law enforcement officers, don't get me wrong. I know some, I know many that really live up to what they're going, what, what they went to uh, academy for. I know many that I have a whole lot of respect for. They love not just the public that they serve, but they love their job. They don't just go through the motions. Go to work every day with an attitude, looking for who they can take their attitude out on. No, I know some good, amazing law enforcement officers. Oh yeah, so I'm not talking about them, no. I'm talking about the ones that should have never put on a uniform in the first place. Who are a disgrace to the uniform and who are a disgrace to the police department that they represent and who are an embarrassment to every law enforcement officer who wishes to do his or her job correctly according to the oath that they took. Oh yeah, these derelict renegades that make law enforcement look ridiculous and shameful for the ones that actually want to do their job correctly. Salute to the officers that actually do their job. Salute to you. But I know, again, I know some great ones. I know some good law enforcement officers in many different towns, many different towns. But we are talking about the ones that should have never, ever graduated. They should have never made it out of psych class. Never. You're looking at idiots with uniforms on, running around with a badge and a gun, with the authority to do to the public and anyone that they choose, <laughs> and in their mind without impunity. This is who we're talking about. This is who we're talking about. So again, we got the sixth officer who has now been suspended. We're gonna wait and see and watch it and pay close attention as to whether he's charged. Or we're gonna be watching to see if Pillsbury Doughman, Mr. Preston Hemphill, we're gonna see if the Pillsbury Doughman gets charged. And then we're gonna see if there's anyone else who's complicit in the death of Tyree Nichols, who stood around watching and looking and kind of acting like there was nothing else to do, like it was just, an, just another day while he sat leaned up against the car, more than likely deceased in my opinion. We wanna see if there's gonna be more indictments. We're gonna see if there's gonna be more. And we're also gonna see how many they coddle and protect as we go along. And to the chief of police, first of all, I don't believe anything she said in that public statement. It sounded so scripted. It didn't sound sincere, in my humble opinion. It didn't sound sincere at all to me. It sounded like a scripted, writing it sounded like something you would read off of a teleprompter that's what it looked, sounded like to me it didn't sound genuine it didn't sound like it came from the heart at all for something like this she didn't need a script all she got all she had to do was stand up in front of the mic and speak and if it came from the heart it would have been felt that way she didn't have to put on no professional air all she had to do was stand up as a black woman who represented the black community regardless of her position as a law enforcement officer. But see, that's the funny thing. A lot of these brothers and sisters who are, on the law, who are in law enforcement, they don't even see themselves as black. They see themselves as blue. And the saddest part about it all is that those of us who share their reflection, we look at them and we see, see, we see ourselves and we say, man, I'm so proud to see this brother as a law enforcement officer. Or I'm so proud to see this sister as a law enforcement officer only to find yourself shocked and your feelings hurt when they begin to deal with you and deal with us as though we have nothing in common. That's a painful thing, but that is a reality. They don't see themselves as black, a lot of them. They see themselves as blue. And that's the situation and that's the problem. Therein lies the disconnect. Therein lies the disconnect in the communities that these officers police. Many of them don't even live in the city that they police. So there is no intimate connection with the citizens of that, uh, 
of that particular town. There is no real intimate connection. They don't know the city. They've learned, they're learning the city like a new person moving into that town. They don't know the old patriarchs of the city. So there is no real respect for the elderly in that city. They don't know those that, are, that have had accomplishments, positive accomplishments in the city. So everybody looks the same to them when they're not from the city. There's a disconnect there. And I think that's part of the problem. And I think they need to address that issue in every law enforcement arena. That's part of the new training that needs to take place. That's part of the new training that needs to be take place. So thank you folks. I appreciate you for getting on the stream tonight. I wanted to give you just an update as to what's going on. And for those of you that did not know in particular what those five uh, officers were literally charged with, they were literally charged with officially second degree murder, misconduct, aggravated kidnapping, official oppression, and aggravated assault. These are the official charges that they had. And again, they were placed into, into jail. They were locked up. They were put, taken into custody. And they were also given a bail from 200,000 to 300,000. And from what I understand, they all have bailed out. So we'll see what happens going forward. Keep your ear to the ground. I will certainly keep mine. And as I get updates, I'll be sharing them with you as they come to me, as I get them. Again, thank you for getting on the stream tonight. I am your host, Charles Chambers. This has been another episode of Let's Talk About It Now. That being said, have a fantastic night. Have a fantastic afternoon and evening tomorrow. I look forward to getting before you, speaking to you Wednesday. That being said, have a great night, folks.